just wanted to share how process the sense of feeling overwhelmed after scrolling and reading different things about spiritual life coaching grifters and the world's falling apart and left and right wing perspectives on things and people telling you how to make money people saying how to decipher and discern the truth and you must follow these steps and this is how you do it here's a handbook here's a guide here let me help you like a lot and it's just boom. so it, it's like it wants to suck you in that to believe that this is real it's happening society is falling apart it's and it seems to all trigger some chemicals in the brain dopamine like anxiety fears and emotions it's engaging and it's it go it's all the energies like here a little bit down in your heart and you feel things but it's so much here and i think i'm here now but it's this is like concentrating the awareness and the more you in the mind the more that's real now what i'm about to say it's like my mind like trying to police whether or not this is a spiritual bypass or it's dissociating but i don't know can you know when you go meditate or do yoga you want to go switch out a bit look at the sunset play with your dog you're just trying to switch out of it to a different mode so what i'm saying is the sense of dropping all the modes and becoming present as presence presence now because i've read a lot about this life coaching grifting things people aren't certified and this part qualified it's interesting because my qualifications i don't know if i'm a life coach but i think i want to help people through my content creation and actually work with people to tap into a certain sense of beauty and present but i don't even think i can say anything about charging money because then that makes it seem like oh i'm a grifter then how am i gonna survive i guess i could just go and live with my parents still i'm 40 one years old i never had so this sense of being like part of society like you got to be in the system like what makes somebody a qualified therapist Cause a lot of these people will say don't be a life code people want to be life coaches but they actually need a therapist or these life coaches are actually people who are 20 something girls just graduated still just coming out of adolescence and the appeal might just be because they're young and pretty and they make people feel alive but what I'm saying is I'm like coaching right now, but it sounds weird to say coach because I feel like I'm just sharing my own experience from seeing all this stuff about coaches and being around coaches like in Bali, like 10 years, seeing like friends of mine that were lost become more coaches and build online businesses with that or having coaches come and do workshops and me attend them. And like, for example, like I went to this authentic relating coaching conscious communication workshop and we did level one and mainly because i was still in love with my ex-girlfriend as she was doing it and i did it too i thought maybe it would help us but also just in love with her but during that course like she and the teacher like had a fling you know i remember him mediating a dialogue between me and her about how to resolve some of the issues and later she, it was just strange because he was calling me bro and he is certified in how to conscious communication and all that stuff. And it just, again, made me distrust certifications and qualifications. And even in my own life, in the mainstream society of, I had a foot surgery that in retrospect, I didn't think I, it was necessary, but it was like a Harvard trained doctor, best medical orthopedics. And these are the true experts. So why I said with my foot, it's like they're following their protocol, but that's like a Western medical mindset. And now I think a lot of the people today are a little more open to integrative medicine, but what does that mean? It, it means like looking at things like, especially if it's soft tissue damage from chronic overuse, like us, like massage techniques, but like some of these Eastern massage techniques and you know what in the west massages are really expensive but in the east it's cheaper and it can be a way to prevent and help heal like people it's so underrated especially if you're living in your head like why are massages so expensive in the west it's almost like you don't want to be truly embodied like relaxed is it because of the pharmaceutical industry am i being too 
magically confabulated thinking that way right now. Because you can take a pill to relax or read a book. <laughs> I don't know. Or talk to a therapist. Right. I think some of the, I'm trying to get at the truth here. It's not about coaching me and be a coach or not. It's just like getting at truth. And like what I do, if anyone can share this with someone, is just hang out in your like beingness, in your void. And it can help alleviate a lot of the things. It's like you just go back to your wholeness and then you come out and you look at the world. What I'm saying is I'm at the edge here where I was like, I got to get off this thing. But some people, do they have another place? another way to, to deal with things afterwards. And am I creating this whole sharing as a way to deal with it too, when I could just be sitting with my source, but it just seems like something so beautiful to share because I've been conditioned so much from culture that I need this and that. And it's all, it took so many years to realize, Hey, like I could be at peace without all that mental stuff that people say, even stuff that's like in psychology training or in modern psychotherapy. Like I've been to therapy. I was a psychology major at a, a university in Maryland, Baltimore County. You can look it up. Cause I just have to say that because people are like, oh, people are saying things without credentials, without any scientific knowledge. Everything's about credentials, but I'm just saying it's, you're seeing it through a screen. Like what, what I was getting at actually is when you come back to this kind of holistic, pure essence view of things, it awakens this kind of, it is sense, like you have a spider sense of things. So like, I think about those life coaches that I knew that were successful, like I didn't really trust them. They had underlying neediness to who they were. And then I was listening to another podcast on spiritual grifters. And even the host was like, seems like everything's a kind of cultish can be a cult. And it's true too. So what makes these life coaches tactics any different from a corporation or even they were saying in the podcast, the corporate culture takes from this, the cults, we're family, but I'm just here to do work. And there's like rituals to be in the corporate life. So even in psychology, even in science, there's like structures. The way I see therapy is it's to help you become adjusted part of society. Like you learn ways to communicate with people so that it's like an agreed upon way of talking. But if you look at kids. When they communicate, if they're like not conditioned, they go Wah. and they figure it out. But then your adults are like, gotta use words. And then the girls get smart with the words. And then at some point as you see when the kid from young, like the boys are like, hmm. And the girls, ha ha, I outsmarted you. But yeah, it's just the taking a deep breath and connecting. It's more like disconnecting from this thing that we call our minds and reality. And it's unpopular because these, I'm not that literal. I don't feel like I'm that smart compared to some of these people with these pages, social accounts who are like out there exposing the truth of things and helping people. But I think there's a back and forth fighting that seems like all within the same kind of loop. If you're a coach, you used to be a coach and now you're calling out coaches or you're into psychedelics and a certain type of therapy and you're pushing that, but the other ones are not good. Yeah. That the spiritual grifter podcast I was listening to the guy started his podcast talking about his website and his program on magic with a CK and K what is it? Chaos theory or like the different hermetic principles. So everyone has a system and they'll quote other things. So what makes something an authority? I think that's, that might be the key here is like, how do you know, how can you trust, how can you even trust yourself? Maybe. And I'm probably not a very credible character to trust because I don't have credentials. I don't have a following. I don't have probably done things online that make me seem crazy. Maybe I am crazy, but one thing I do know is that I, that my, I don't trust my mind, even though sometimes I do, but there's something in me that doesn't trust my beliefs and it can step out of it more than I think a lot of people, I think part of the context of why, because I'm like Chinese, I'm American, I'm Brazilian, I grew up moving around a lot in different cultures, different groups. So it's like, I'm less identified with some of these things. And yet who knows, maybe I am very identified, but I, and then I'm into this questioning everything and you know, questioning myself and my ideas and reality. And yeah, things go wrong. I'm not 20 anymore. I'm like 42, 40, yeah, almost 42. And I've never had a career really. 
So that discredits me with people who have careers. Like I notice a lot of these like digital branding, marketing people who have become spiritual or business people, like they don't really understand me or I don't understand. We don't communicate well. It almost makes me feel like stupid. Like I'm already stupid in the business, but then when you talk spiritual with them, it's, I don't know how to talk spiritual, like how you can talk it, create programs. It makes me feel like an idiot. But then us again, like I, I'm like playing their, I'm like being pulled into their game, into their system. So it's like everyone's walking around with these systems in their heads and trying to impose it on the world and compare it to other systems and say, this system is wrong. So there's something I'm, I want to get at, which is this kind of truth, which is what everyone's getting at. So this is my contribution and I serve. And not just with people, hey, let's have fun. Let's go surfing I'm by myself in the big waves. And that's, I love it. And in that world, it's like, you can really feel that every, that the whole thing, human world is made up, but it's so real for people. So then it's okay. Trauma informed therapy. Like you have to be extra sensitive. I think this is what I'm noticing. Like, especially I want to say the West, but I think everyone, but people who, when you have to be like sensitive to people's ego, you can't say it like that. That was the whole conscious communication thing. You have to say it like this. Then I realized people use that conscious communication to manipulate too. They use the right language to manipulate. I think what's missing, why everyone feels so lost and trying to like attaching to these like irrational views of things and conspiracy theories, partly is because their egos are being like shook and they're being exposed to so many perspectives. They don't, it's like, how do you know what to trust? But maybe the call here is to be able to step out of your mind step out of this mental reality that has all your energy here and just and be in your beingness. And no one really trusts staying in that for long. And maybe the fortunate thing or unfortunate of not having a job or being, um, being like a spoiled kid, I have so much time to myself. And sometimes it can go into thoughts and creating things. Other times it's like a lot of time just not being part of anything and you feel your pure being like awareness. And I used to think, oh, I have to be part of a tribe and part of belonging to create or to share it. So no, you just be like an animal, like a bear goes into the cave or any creature needs when they heal, they just go isolate themselves. So even that, like you look at therapy, it's all, oh, it's not good to self isolate. It's avoided. It's bad. But at the same time, people are saying like, look at nature, trust. Let's go back to, let's trust the natural world, but it's selective, right? You want the sunshine and the fresh air, but you don't want what animal gets hurt and they go into self-isolation. The society won't let you do that. You have to go talk to someone. What's wrong? Da -da, oh my God. Medication, therapy. And this is, it gets people all messed up in their heads, man, even more. But why? Oh, because you need to be productive member of society to help progress what your country, America versus China, America needs to be producing means to be number one. So what's the motivation behind all this stuff? On the surface, it's like, yes, we want to help you thrive. In, in what way? Like in the city for my life, I have more mental clarity and can think logically, but I lose the connection to nature and the rhythms, the natural aliveness and seeing nature as a character that you, you engage with. And I'm because I've spent so much of my time in the city and maybe because of certain constantly moving, like my body's a little bit unable to adapt to, to places that my mind wants to live, like here in the tropics, I probably better in the dry, cool air. But yeah, maybe that's revealing my own neurosis, my own mental issues. But that's again in the West, in the, I say West because that's, I don't know what else to say, but in the modern world, the mind, it's mind over matter. Everything's about your mind can conceive, your body can achieve. And I did this and at what cost all this convenience, all these things come on time in the West the efficiency at what cost. What I'm saying is some of the cost is your connection to nature, to your source, to your being, and you look outside, but then when you look inside, it's scary and people don't stay there long enough. They have to schedule time for it. Then they treat that as an achievement. What I'm saying is I'm trying to sound a little bit smart to appeal to some of the logistical smart people out there. But what I'm saying is my nat the natural way is dumb and you feel your way through things. And it's like, you don't have to read 10,000 scholarly articles about what food you should eat 
like you can feel what's good for you. And that's balance. I think when you're too much here, you have so many issues, partly because you don't understand, you don't trust your intuition. You have to read a manual on how to trust to tell if someone's a grifter or not. Meanwhile, the whole reason why you do get grifted is because they were saying this in the podcast. The intellectuals, the people who are actually highly educated, the most easily susceptible are getting played and do because the grifters use mind and logic. They try to like magically talk you into some state. Meanwhile, you learn, you don't trust your deeper, actually so, even first impressions of some people. We don't even, a lot of people don't even know. They just check who's, how many followers does this person have? What check marks? You know, these, the beauty of a natural world connection is you can feel yourself holistically more than just checking reviews, checking a rating, just because this is the society today. Everything's based on, and, and that's credentials. You check who Yelp, this restaurant. But there's also a beauty in the unknown experience. You can't curate and control everything. And the, the whole thing about people getting grifted, I think is partly they actually feel you know, something to do with control. Like the person who's talking, grifting you can speak to you in a way that makes you trust them because they're using certain words and ways of speaking that massages and en enables your ego, your mind. And if you lit, and that's why you can get tricked and you and then play on your ego's neediness. So after getting played a lot, not even as by spiritual grifter types, but also like in relationships and in life and trusting too easily. I feel much more whole, but I'm more isolated. I wouldn't say I'm a, like I'm a wall, but it's like a, people acting nice. You've got this like really weird, like I come to this hotel, right? And it says, welcome home. And I'm like, you playing on my home? Cause I keep coming here. It's like, they're playing on that. So it's like, what are we playing on here? What am I playing on with you? I hope, I'm hoping just to share and I hope I can make money off something else besides what I'm sharing right now and other spiritual stuff. And I think in some ways they did give me an advantage of seeing the truth over the years because my parents were supporting me with an allowance. So then I could explore all these spiritual things and see how people were trying to make a life for themselves through their yoga or their life coaching. Cause they're all just trying to survive. They don't, not everybody has the privilege. And so then there's that compassion for them, but also it's, wow, there's a whole manipulative art to how they act and create the characters of who they are, especially the musicians. They will get you the flute players, guitarists, the singers, they're all this, this like land of magic here, man. I'm just very interested now cause I've been part out of the community for a while. I think like now I think with this flux of people who are more corporate, like how is that affecting everything? And people and with social media, like everyone getting called out. For me, I just like play with the whole art of it. I don't know what I am. Maybe I'm a grifter. I'm an empath. I like to play in different characters and connecting like shaman. I'm a shaman. I'm a medicine man. But it's so loaded to even say any of these words. What can you actually say? If I'm talking like this, it makes me narcissistic. But if I created a page where I was anonymous and still said the same things, but even went even harder because no one knows I was, that's not narcissistic. That's like doing a service to the world. It's more egoless. See, it's just people's minds are so funny because it's all about how attached you are to this mental reality. It doesn't matter if you're using I, like you're using your face or you're using some anonymous face. You could still be attached to it. So what I'm exploring here is can we stay in our like beautiful surrendered dance without like our egos like coming in and messing it up. So live as the art of that. Oh, I can't believe I just talked that long. Remember what I talked about? Yeah. Peace.